My first words when I heard the bipolar diagnosis were, I knew it. <laughs> For years, I knew in my heart that what my doctors and family had been telling me was wrong. Attention deficit hyperactive disorder didn't explain the highs or the voices. It completely ignored the crushing waves of doom and morbid obsessions with death and dismemberment. Finally, no one could explain the rage and confusing whirlwind of thoughts and other emotions that flooded my brain after I actually took the medications they gave me. The bipolar diagnosis was a revelation, a relief. My reaction, I might add, surprised the hell out of my doctors. <laughs> my memory of my childhood is fuzzy at best and completely full of holes. But I still remember clear as day when I was nine years old in my psychiatrist's waiting room, flipping through a pamphlet titled, What is Manic Depression? My memory of this is so clear, I could tell you in detail about the bird, an oriole, that was sitting on the outside ledge of the window and how sunny and warm it was. I remember this so clearly because the pamphlet was a splash of cold water in my face. Everything in that pamphlet made sense. I remember telling my therapist about the pamphlet and how all of it seemed right. I was, of course, told that it was impossible for me to be manic depressive. After all, I was only nine, and children couldn't suffer from any depression, manic or otherwise. <laughs> Science has since proven this is not the case, but this was the common belief in the 80s. I was told I should just listen to them and take my Ritalin, a drug that was making me utterly psychotic, though it would take us more than a decade to realize that. One day, when I was 13, I was doing my best to ignore another sunny summer day, doodling on one of my growing number of sketch pads. The stereo played my favorite recording of the BBC audio play of The Lord of the Rings. I heard my mom calling my name, as she often did, from the kitchen. Like any teenager, I dutifully responded by yelling back to her from my comfy position on the bed. <laughs> I wasn't going to move unless I had to, of course. Also, per usual, she didn't hear me respond, so she kept calling my name, growing ever more insistent. Eventually, I was annoyed enough to put down my pad and wander into the kitchen to find out what she wanted. She wasn't there. Still, I kept hearing her call out to me, this time from the laundry room. So I walked through the family room, opened the door, and poked my head in there. Nothing. I looked out the large window and noted there were no cars in the driveway. Nobody was home. I was alone in the house. Totally freaked, I ran into my room, shut the door, and turned up the stereo just a bit louder. I don't remember ever not feeling this way living deeply in my head, preoccupied with thoughts that range from the origin of life on Earth to exactly how Batman's gas-powered grappling hook managed to be so compact. <laughs> I don't remember a time when I wasn't deliberately doing everything I could to push others away and leave me alone with my drawings and stories, yet being completely confused as to why my classmates didn't want to hang around me. Yeah, <laughs> that bipolar disorder diagnosis was a relief. It was as though that last piece of the puzzle I'd spent my entire life trying to put together had finally been handed to me. But identifying the illness was only the first step. The next was figuring out the proper cocktail of medications I need to get my brain under control. By the, fine that, uh, by the time they finally took the Ritalin out of my regular diet, I'd already established a reputation of being a walking time bomb. Once, I tripped over a stool picked it up, and threw it through the window. You get the idea. Many of the more popular meds of the day had already been tried. My brain and body had been subjected to all of the colorful and fun side effects that can occur when you start rerouting and rejiggering the brain's processes. The kicker about side effects is that while it can take weeks, even months, for the meds to have any benefit, those side effects can rear their ugly head in a matter of hours. Even knowing this, I never read about these effects when I take a new medication because I don't want to constantly worry about them. Thus, I was unprepared when the incontinence kicked in during a job interview the first time I took Paxil. 
A little pink wonder drug that was supposed to make my dis depression just disappear. There I was, wearing my nicest suit, sitting in a hot office, festering in my own filth for over an hour, without letting the interviewer know what was happening on my side of the desk. After the interview, I stood up, shook his hand, and did my best to casually head to the bathroom to wash out my pants before I got on the metro to head home. The worst part, I didn't get the job. <laughs> that experience was almost enough to make me swear off meds entirely, and taking them is still a challenge to this day, even though I finally found my magic mix a little after my 35th birthday, more than 13 years after my initial diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Even so, I still have breakdowns. Now, mind you, breaking down is not a quick process, not for me not the last time. It started subtly, short temper or fatigue after a long day at work that I just couldn't shake, <coughs> then drinking, yelling, a few missed days at the office because I can't get out of bed. Soon, I'm ducking phone calls from concerned friends, turning over furniture and smashing things around the apartment. I can't sleep and have terrible dreams when I do finally manage to get a couple of hours. This can go on for months. Once or twice, the police were called. Then jail and the hospital. I probably shouldn't have enjoyed the hospital as much as I did. <laughs> but it was peaceful there. The staff and other patients were all sympathetic and understanding. The food was good. And there were books and games. I even enjoyed the tightly regimented schedule. Get up at 7, gather for coffee and meds. Group therapy at 10, lunch at noon, followed by more meds. Another group at 1.30, visitors at 6, night meds, and lights out at 9. Funny thing, I still try to stick to this schedule for my meds and meals. It guarantees that I get those things and stay clear of the quicksand of my mental illness. I still have my ups, still have my downs. I gotta stay vigilant on top of my game because that's what it takes to be in the world to be in a relationship, and to be here tonight. <laughs>